I'm back with another video. Today we got Aleister Crowley, the man who spoke the demons. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. This is a story about a man who spoke to demons. A man who went by many names in his life. The Beast, Brother Perbduro, or Ankh Afen Kosu. He was an occultist, a student of the dark arts and supernatural phenomena, founder of the religion Thelema, and a publisher of books on magic and the paranormal. His followers regarded him as a visionary and a champion of free expression in a closed-minded society. His enemies branded him as insane and capable of great cruelty to those around him. The devil incarnate or a troubled visionary that was simply misunderstood. It's all a matter of perspective. This is the story of Alistair Crowley. He is right about one thing. It's the matter of perspective and emotional intelligence and seeing it from multiple perspectives. I know the elites use these things and they put it in a light to us as negative. So if anything, we just ride a, I mean, we just had a run from it. Me personally, I always been an exception to the rule. I always be on the outskirts of things. The generalized fact or generalized whatever never suited me. I always been outside the lines, whether I wanted to or not, but I'm proud that I am. Um, yeah, I'm going to learn about everything and I have been. I'm going on. It was since I was 15. I would be deemed 26 on this girl going encounter this all around. 11 years. I've been in this shit for a very long time of aware and very open minded and into the supernatural of things. And I'm not a part of this woke community and it's a new wave. No, I've been like this. You can talk to my mother and all the state will tell you. They used to look at me crazy when I was younger, but now they don't look at it too crazy. But, um, I'm going to embrace and learn about my power and something I can use and utilize and opposed to just running from it. So like a female would be a witch, then I'm going to learn a thing about a warlock. It's up to you. You can use it for negative or you can use it for positive or it can just be indifferent for self-interest. Me personally, it ain't your fucking business and I could be lying if I was. I'm using it for good, though. I don't like a bully, a coward bully. I don't like the people out there that created Judas Cradles and Brazen Bulls. They up in arms to toss someone else in there, but they can't sustain or take the pain themselves. It's like I'm not Goku. I'm more Vegeta-like. I'm not the nice guy, but at the same time, I don't agree with, and I won't let that happen, not in my line of sight, uh, someone else just being bullied, uh, So it's like, I don't like the coward bullies being the elitist and what they do to everybody. And I'm not the goody two-shoe either. Never will I want to be. So it's like, I'm in the middle. But the middle is self-interest though, right? Me, it's not necessarily that. Sometimes it can be self-interest depending on what we're talking about. That's definitely a possibility. I can't think of anything about it right now, but yeah, I'm learning about it all numerology astrology i've been here for a very long time now so i'm just amplifying and enchanting what i already know things change and you see the patterns of things you see the errors and things trial and tribulation the patterns and sit back and reflect introspect and assess off of that but yeah i'm gonna i'm learning i you ever read the book to ride a silver broomstick i think that's what it's called you got that book back there but um yeah, I'm learning my power and I'm using it for whatever reasons I'm using it. Again, I could be on here lying saying I'm using it for the good, whatever. You never know with people. So I'm just telling you that. Um, I know what I'm using it for, though, but I'm going to go towards my power and learn about it. So I'd rather be knowledgeable about everything that's real. And this shit is very real and powerful. It's a reason why witches was burned at the stake and all that. And I'm not running from it. I'm learning it. Numerology, astrology sacred geometry binary code um what else so much kundalini akashic records chakras it's, it's so much and not saying i'm just now learning about it no i have for a while it's just like i'm picking up little pieces here and there and putting it together whatever but let's continue 
future warlock. <laughs> Alistair Crowley was born on the 12th of October, 1875, in the sleepy English town of Leamington Spa. His father, Edward Crowley, was a preacher. This is for entertainment purposes only. I help make episodes for South Park. And belonged to a fringe Christian sect known as the Plymouth Brethren. They took a radical fundamentalist view to the Bible, meaning that whatever was written down was meant to be taken literally. At its worst, this included the subjugation of women and the persecution of homosexuals. His preaching career was cut short, however, when in 1886, he died of tongue cancer. From a young age, No, he didn't just say tongue cancer. I swear to God, he did not just say that. No, he did not just say tongue cancer. Tongue cancer. From a young age, Alan cut short, however, when in 1886, he died of tongue cancer. From tongue. a young age, Alistair was sent to a number of boarding schools. He was a strange boy, preferring his own company instead of playing with other children. As a result, he was often subject to bullying, sometimes by his teachers. This troubled child grew into a troubled teenager. He began to question his strict Christian upbringing and enjoyed pointing out inconsistencies in the Bible. At the same time, he was often caught smoking, drinking. To the Christians out there, you shall learn the, the foundation of Christianity. What the uh, papal inquisitions enlisted, they killed 80 million men, women, and children and converted them into Christians came there whoever their leader was they tor tortured them in the most horrendous way flaying all kind of shit you can't take and it will make you convert into whatever they say they want you to be learn the english language all it and that's the foundation that's the starting point of, of your christians so me personally again i reiterate it all the time I'm not a bot. Everybody got to die, but I ain't everybody. I'm an ascended master. Ascended master live for thy wilt. Nah, but, um, yeah, that's the, that's the foundation of Christianity. I do agree with that sentiment in the Bible being two thirds won't make it. Two thirds won't make it because source don't love you. It's because the two thirds are ignorant. They're dumb, deaf, or blind. One of the two, two of the, two out of three or all three. I will argue most of all, all three. It's someone that will agree with me. And that's dumb, deaf, and blind themselves. It's that stupid. So, yeah, you, you guys should look into it. I will never give my power to some external source. I don't pray. While you're praying, it's someone using that same word. You can't pronunciate it different. You're praying and it's someone praying on kids. Make that make sense. You're using the same word, buddy. It's, you have the same energetic signature attached to that word. And you're saying it. I don't pray to shit. I affirm things to thyself. When I walk, I expect the doors to open sesame. I'm dead ass. I don't. I ain't one of y'all. And even visiting prostitutes. Horrified, his mother would nickname him the Beast, which is a monster from the book of Rev. The Beast, six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. The man is the Beast, right? Six, six, six. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 2 plus 4 is 6. So it's time itself. That 6 is very fucking weird. You can't dodge that motherfucker. That's like. I'm pretty sure I can find another one too. It's like everything revert back to 6, 6, 6. Okay, 666, 18, 1 plus 8, that's 9, so completion. So man is completion, right? Time is completion. Let's continue. Revelation, a nickname that Crowley would soon delight in. In 1895, at the age of 19, Alistair enrolled at the University of Cambridge to study English Cambridge. literature. He developed a love for chess and romantic poetry, reading the works of Lord Byron, Edward John Trelawney and Percy Shelley. It was during this time when Alistair developed an unexplainable attraction to a fellow student, Herbert Charles Pollitt. The feeling was mutual, and the two entered a brief and passionate charger. relationship. Their commitment to one another was soon to end, for Alistair developed a deeper love, the occult. Spending days at a time in old, dusty libraries, 
a cult that just basically hidden from the populace the consensus so it's few people on the outskirts that's the exception to the rule to have a little bit more knowledge of knowing of things that isn't propelled to the forefront that's all it is hidden secrecy and all hidden the secrecy ain't bad if i had the philosopher damn did i if I had the Philosopher's Stone, not to say I don't, that's to, a way to reach immortality, Ascended Master. If I had that, not to say I don't, once more, I wouldn't even share it with my own mother. She gossiped too much with her own sisters, friends, and she's one of those. Indoctrinated with what she thinks she already know already. And I'm not the one to tell you what you deserve. I am the one to tell you what you deserve from me, and she would not deserve that from me. I wouldn't give that to my own mother, Immortality. I wouldn't. She was spread it too much to too much idiots. And before you know it, the world will have it. And it will be havoc. And it's already havoc. Have at it. So let's continue. Alistair discovered books of a more mystical nature. It had started innocently with religious texts from around the world, but he soon delved into darker material. Works like the Lesser Key of Solomon, a 16th century grimoire of spells, rituals, and evil spirits. His morbid curiosity with magic and the dark arts evolved into an obsession. All ghosts and spirits, whether it's in Ouija boards or however you come in contact with them, aren't all evil. At the end of the day, they have their own conscience and some of them are good. Well, let's start with bad. Some of them are bad. Most may be bad. Some of them may be good. Even if it's a small number, because it's not, we put demon and associate with a negative. So it's like, even if they on the outskirts like us, I've always been an exception to the rule. It may be good or want to help. And then you got ones in the middle. They will lean evil or good or self-interest or indifferent. It just depends. But yeah, I'm going to run towards my power. I'm not running from shit, bitch. I'm not. I know the elitists use this on us on a grand scale. I'm going to use it back. I'm going to use it. How, I'm, they know s secret ways to transfer their karmic debt to s elsewhere. Basically, they can genocide a bunch of people and they get away with it because they know how to do some ritualistic like shit and transfer their karma over to wherever else. Like, so, yeah, I'm, a, I'm not running from it. I'm going to learn it because it's a real thing and it's important and it's powerful and it's called a cult for a reason and it's hidden. And I will learn about it and I am learning about it and have learned about it. And I will use it. Let's continue. And he soon decided to devote his life to occultism. Having left Cambridge, failing to finish his degree, Alistair was able to live off the money that he'd inherited from his father. From a young age, Alistair was extraordinarily wealthy. This allowed him to travel around the world and pursue his expensive extraordinarily hobbies, chief wealthy. among which was mountain climbing, something he gained recognition for among mountaineering circles. But Crowley was keen to progress his occult education. In November 1898, he was introduced to the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The group believed to possess ancient knowledge. They studied esoteric teachings, medieval Jewish Kabbalah, and performed magical ceremonies, which included ritualistic drug taking. Okay, back. Included Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes. Adopting the name Brother Perabduro, Alistair impressed all those around him, displaying an extensive knowledge of occult literature. As a result, he quickly rose through the ranks. But his roguish lifestyle of excessive drug taking and bisexuality made him a controversial figure and led to a number of feuds with fellow initiates. Those around him spoke of his, quote, unappeasable desire to control people and that he also had, quote, a tendency to quarrel savagely with anyone who disagreed with him. Many fellow members refused him from ascending further ranks. A schism soon developed within the order, which led to Alistair leaving shortly after. I always dreamt that one day I'd make it. Disillusioned with the Order and its rigid hierarchy, Crowley retreated to traveling. With the funds his father had left him, he journeyed to Japan, Terror. China, Sri Lanka, and India. He continued to climb and even joined an early expedition to climb the second highest peak on Earth, K2. During his travels, he was introduced to Eastern philosophy. He studied the teachings of Taoism and Buddhism, as well as practicing yoga. He decided to include various hard drugs into his curriculum, like hashish, opium, and certain... See, that's what I want to do. I want to go and meditate in the mountains with the monks. 
I want to continue my wing wing chung training. I'm trying to still master my boxing. I'll whoop your ass. I'm self-taught. I remembered it from my past life. I was a boxer. So it's like some things I'm born with and I got the skill and it's just insane. It's unutterable for exists as an entity and lanes which transcends our material words or symbols. But yeah, I want to go and meditate in the mounts with the, with the monks. I want to grow my own food. I want to be able to test and discern and decipher if my seeds GMO itself. I don't want to need a third party. He could be lying to me. And it's your sacred temple. We're being chemically molested. They're fucking your food. And literally, GMOs, pesticide, fluoride, sodium fluoride, all kind of things is in your food and water. Involuntarily. And you got to pay for it. And then you putting it in your sacred temple. That's no different than someone actually really raping you. They're chemically castrating you. Chemically molesting you. So it's like, yeah, I want to be off grid, get away from all this shit and be my own personal James Bond, John Wick, Keanu Reeves, where I'm capable, I'm competent, I'm sharp, and I'm, I'm aware. I'm steps ahead, chess player. Um, But we bombarded with so much distractions. You want this girl, you want this car, you want these clothes, you want this chain, you want this respect from these people, you want to fit in. A lot of people won't even... even they won't even get to enjoy the leisure of their time, their birthright to undergo neuroplasticity and rewrite their DNA from what their forefathers did to their ancestors. Because that's still relevant. It's in your blood through epigenetic trauma. It's the reason why you're scared of things or you have weird fetishes or you into something. You got to rewrite that. But the system won't give you... And it's, They won't even give you... You ain't even got the time to rewrite what their kind did to you. should be old that you should be reparated for that to undergo neuroplasticity and rewrite your dna due to what their forefathers did to you and still doing to you currently it's like and most people plugged in at a job the job is a fan is public business for private dishonest gain why are you working hard and making an honest living is somebody behind the scenes privately eating private parts of gain that is honestly up your hard work and labor and they in cahoots with the people that's the reason your kid died your mother of whatever health complications due to the standardized american diet approved by the fda poison stamped it as full and safe for the body when it's quite the opposite i remember just not that long ago in middle school going to south avondale they was telling me all oh, the milk make your bones stronger it's such and such no wonder i couldn't retain the information in school come to find out do the opposite that goes to show you everything is backwards left is right and right is left up is down and down is up they saying they're white and they're calling you black Switch the roles. You can look at the history. I'm tired of all this shit, bro. I'm tired of talking. I don't want to be no... I don't even want to do that revolutionary shit no more. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a talker. I don't want to be a Black Panther. Marcus Garvey. Fucking... Uh, what is it? I can't think of it. Whatever Elijah Muhammad and them... I don't, I'm, I'm tired of talking. I understand... You need to keep your sword sheathed. And the sun, I mean, the tongue is more powerful than a lot of things. It's more powerful than a gun and all that. Because, like, somebody with that kind of passion and that can talk like that and witty like that, like a Hitler, he can get people to feel that in their hearts and play off that. And at the snap of a finger, they go and do whatever he say by his tongue. So I understand the power of that. And I will use that as well, because it's a gift I have, but I'm tired of talking. Like, I want I'm hands-on. I want it when we get to the good part, when we get to the Avengers-like part from the movies that's inspired off of real life, right? I'm trying to kick they ass to what they will never cover. No Devin Haney. You won't recover from this ass kicking. I kick ass like Bruce Lee. That's an ass kick. Boy, shoot me. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of these people. And again, I will never forgive them. You took the only person out that ever told me that they was proud of me, my best friend, my grandma. She was embarrassed. She felt pain she shouldn't have. You extended it into her afterlife, possibly. She may not be 
she might not have passage to this other realm of enlightenment due to dying in a condition of believing in this external source so you got her with this life after life and possibly life after afterlife i'm gonna kick your ass for that i believe in the alpha both of your ass if you did it on purpose bitch you did it on purpose let's continue hallucinogenic substances in 1902 at the age of 29 alistair found himself in paris there he met a woman named rose edith kelly who was also interested in the occult Although she was initially betrothed to someone else, the two had an affair and swiftly got married. For their honeymoon, they decided to go to Egypt. As with all things Alistair did, this trip would- Indigenous Aboriginal people, what you feel about that? Some of you, you so fucked up. Again, epigenetic trauma. They perceptionalize our people in our light that isn't in favor of us to what people got their preconceived notions of us due to how they depicted us and how they advertise us to the world. And people perceive it to be the way they intended them to see it. So you see that your mom telling you you ain't shit because you look like your father that wasn't around by this design of Planned Parenthood. It's in your conscious as well as your subconscious. You placebo yourself. You actualize, materialize, and manifest a, manifest a reality for yourself, and you don't know the physics of how this is fucking possible. And God or Jesus, bitch ass, ain't helping you. All you have is your thyself, your gut, your internal dialogue, and your ancestors behind you. So give it up to them and move forward. It's crazy. You come from this, but yet you can't go. Pyramids all in the Grand Canyon, but yet you can't go. See, as who? The government's supposed to work for you. But yet, government. So, government is right there for mental. They're governing your mind and everything you're indoctrinated with, or whatever you think you know. But yet, all the Tory guys, it's, they ain't indigenous and aboriginal. They just get to live heaven on earth. And then they make you give your power to some external source. So, when you die, they tell you you can obtain heaven at that point. Bitch, when I unlock my Paris, I'm the undertaker at that point. I'm doing the I'm gonna do the tombstone and break your head. You not getting back up. Proved to be far from normal. In usual Crowley fashion, he set up a shrine. Oh, look at my hotel. people, bro. Look at my people. I wouldn't say this is crisp or a cast now, like Gino editing. But these were gods, right? He got an eye of his head. You think that was a helmet? Look, the head will be somewhere right here. That's literally an eye of his head on the head, and it's not metaphorically. This is a real thing. The centaur was a real thing. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's an abomination, because someone can argue that this may be as well, right? But these things always been around. You can't think of nothing that doesn't exist. It's a universal library, and the books are infinite. Anything you can do, think of, draw, you can have your baby draw with a blindfold on, whatever. However you're going to do it and you did it and you could possibly do it, it's been done a trillion times over. It's nothing new under the sun. That's a real thing. Look where we come from, dog. Well, America is originally Tamari, the first real Egypt, right? What well, ain't Kemet. can't even decipher and articulate what this even is or what this mean it's not right there for no reason just know it's very important it's a key to door to a door let me know who you think got the dopest culture of all time i'm not just saying that cuz but yeah I mean, it makes sense. We we dominate in everything, and the most inspiring in every field we step in, even though the numbers is rigged, or if the numbers ain't rigged, they're still rigged in a way due to the programming the populace have. And it's other people that's born with the settings to win because they got the biological makeup of the people that run all the media and how they perceptionalize they people in the light. You're going to click on that because it's deemed the normal. You think you will relate or whatever. It's the reason. You will never equate to a Mr. Beast if you're indigenous to Aboriginal. It don't matter how talented you is. It don't matter if you can speak fluently without saying the N-word or cursing or whatever. You just never will by design. But at the same time, you born with capabilities and things that isn't in favor. That's not fair to them. You ain't getting low fertility rates from the sun. They trying to do that a different way, like plant parenthood and other ways to implement chemical castration. But... The sun unlocking your doormat DNA. You're going to go online and be able to kick their ass. Or you can look past that and be Dr. King. I ain't never been Dr. King. 
I always reiterate, I believe in the alpha. Both of your eyes, if you did it on purpose, meaning someone may say an alpha, ah, I don't because I'm walking. I'm out of my business. I say don't do that. And you hit me with a slingshot and knock out my eye and I'm Fetty Wap. Now it's up to me to price point my eye. And I say my eye is worth your whole fucking family tree. Now die. You can't fault me for that. That's how I so choose to retaliate. And it's me and it's real. This ain't for entertainment purposes only. YouTube, this is for entertainment purposes only. Like, this thing crazy. <laughs> Hell, I might be, and I don't give a fuck. You heard what Tupac said in Juice. I feel the same way. Well, sweet, and began recounting spells and incantations, invoking the various Egyptian gods. What's that? What happened next is Crowley's later recollection. The story goes that his wife, Rose, suddenly fell faint and became unresponsive. All she could murmur were the words, Unresponsive. They are waiting for you. She ain't they, responding. as it turned out, was the god Horus. As if led by a spirit, his wife took him to a nearby museum, all the way to a stele dating to the reign of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Looking down at the exhibit number, it read 666, the number of the beast. Suddenly, a voice from the depth of Alistair's mind called out. It called itself Iwas, and it claimed to be an See, angel. Man right here. It told Alistair to write down all that it said into a book. For the next three days, Iwas dictated its words to Alistair, who dutifully wrote them all down. What he was left with was a small tome entitled The Book of the Law. Opening the f Yo, what's crazy? I thought about actually getting my actual eye done. And that was, that was before I seen them other people do it, man. It's, it's a few people done it now. It was before that, so I'm not copying you, bitch. I could have got, I could get a lie detector test until y'all been thought of that. Do I think I will? Um, probably not. But if I was, that shit, I'd be the most fire with it. So whoever do it the best is yours. <laughs> I thought about that. Hey, oh, man. First pages, the book was replete with spells, as well as discourses and philosophy. A key teaching of this book was that humanity would soon enter a new age, the Aeon of Horus. In this time, mankind will overthrow Christianity and finally take control of their own destiny. To achieve this goal, there was but one simple commandment. Quote, do what thou wilt. Every man and woman is a star. The word of sin is restriction. In other Me personally, it's do thy will as long as you're not imposing your will on someone else. Or if it was a lush, beautiful field, picnic, whatever, and you just come there and transfer that energy over there into a negative and just fuck up things and leave things in the condition that it wasn't before you got there. But yeah, do thy will as long as you're not imposing your will on someone else. Not with your trickology shit either, none of that. And you're not messing up something that was perfectly found before your essence spawned there. I don't agree with this sentence of restriction. So he feel like these are gates that you're confined to and with your true nature, what you really want to do, you're restricted, even if it's sinful. Okay. That varies though. Some things is common sense in the Bible to me. Some things in these other books or whatever. I don't agree with. So basically, some sin I may fuck with. Somebody may be like, you killing people on Grand Theft Auto. Hell, I enjoy it. I don't want to go to heaven if I can't play Grand Theft Auto. Motherfucker, no. I don't want to go to your heaven they speak of if I can't play. I don't want to. Shit. So it depends, though. To me, personally. But let's continue. In other words, whatever you feel like doing, go and do it. Regardless of popular opinion or conventional morality. Believing himself. Morality. I agree with the 42 ideals of my art. I have codes, ethics, morals, principalities. If I split this shit in two, personalities become your personal reality, but it's how you think and how you feel is how you act out. Don't make this a scene. I've seen enough. Left on scene. Mm, she had enough. Nah, <laughs> but nah, that's. I don't agree with that. Basically, if you want to flay someone, go ahead and whoop the fucking do. I believe in don't do nothing to no one that you can't take yourself. Don't sit nobody on no motherfucking Judas cradle if you can't take it with a smile on your face. That's some coward bully shit. And bitch, I will vanquish you and your whole family tree. I'm not showing any leniency. I don't agree with this. See, I'd have doxed his ass and quick scoped him up close. 
whoever one of his cult-like members will try to swoop around and grab his reboot car i'm sending him back into spectator mode and definitely what well, he's going to roam earth forever where well, his purpose will consist of nothing but opening and shutting cabinets with the archons i'm not gonna agree with this shit. you see it's like i'm learning about man to use it for how i want to use because i can't tell you i'm using it for good but i can be full of shit up here so it's no point of me even specifying on this but i know the reasons why i'm not running from it but i don't agree with this do as i will no matter if you imposing your will on someone else if you want to go and molest the baby do as i will crowley ought to kick you score off in your motherfucking ass to be a reincarnation of an Egyptian prophet, Ankh-Uthin Kosu, Crowley returned to London and founded a new religion. He called it Thelema, a Greek word meaning desire. It was based on the teachings found in the Book of the Law and promoted a life of hedonism and radical free will. It was a fusion of a number of religious traditions, mixing elements of Western occultism, Jewish Kabbalah, Theravada Buddhism and yoga. To accompany spiritual practice, Crowley advocated the heavy use of psychedelics. In 1907, he founded his own secret order, the AA, believed to stand for Argentium Astrum, the Latin for Silver Star. Owing to Crowley's notoriety in occult circles, the AA quickly grew in number. Soon, he released a periodical for its members, the Equinox. During this time, it was rumored that Iwas had contacted him again and instructed him to write more holy books. Things were going well for Alistair and his nascent movement, but nothing good lasts forever. Nothing good lasts forever. Now Sadly. a leader of his own religion, with a philosophy to justify his own behavior, Crowley enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. He continued to travel, take increasingly heavier drugs, and have affairs with both women and men. At the same time, his marriage to Rose began to break down. Despite his own scandalous lifestyle, he became frustrated that his wife had developed alcoholism. In 1909, he divorced her on the grounds of adultery. After their marriage fell apart, Rose's addiction worsened and she was admitted into an institution in 1911. Eventually, let me know if you guys believe some people are born inherently irredeemably evil. After all, one thing that is true in your Holios Biblios, your son book, you will suffer up your father's doings. That's not the words verbatim, but that's the sentiment. So if your father never came back with the milk and you never met him, you suffer of his doings, your mother as well. And it's all relevant, still all in your bloodline, whether you have incest fetishes, molestation fetishes, you're into kids, kid transformers, bestiality, did I say that? It's of your forefathers. It's in your bloodline. Shit, it's, you use an abomination. Somebody, Vl Vladimir, Prashu Prashimia. He need to drop a bomb on that nation at that point. Because some people, he is born fucked up. And it can vary. It can be conditioning. It could be being a mirror of this construct. It could be what you didn't have at home. It could be what you have had going on at home. It can be that you ain't have a home. It can be multiple reasons. But that's definitely a factor too. What's in the blood. Bunch of rape, blood, genocide, <sighs> lies, evil, and you think you just had a pure baby. You will suffer of your father's doings. All the traveling, and mother. drug taking, and libertinism had caught up with Crowley. The inheritance left by his father had now dried up. What's more, his addiction to drugs had severely worsened. To treat his asthma, his doctor prescribed him heroin, to which he soon developed heroin. a crippling dependency. During the outbreak of World War I, he was living in New York, gaining a small income through writing short stories and articles. He even had a brief stint working as a double agent for British intelligence. After the war, his attempts at spreading Thelema in the United States were largely unsuccessful, British. and it soon came time for Alistair to leave. In 1920, Crowley rented a small house in Sicily, bringing some of his most dedicated followers with him. There they set up the Abbey of Thelema, and soon began to accept fresh disciples in the hopes of advancing the Aeon of Horus. The Abbey of Thelema was designed to be a utopia, free from all the restrictions that plagued modern life. Aside from a few rituals to the sun god Ra and a weekly Gnostic mass, most of the members were left to pursue their own interests. Crowley took a number of lovers and ran the commune as its de facto leader, with the responsible right. commune as its de facto leader. With the responsibility-free lifestyle advocated by Thelema, the abbey quickly became dilapidated. It was full of litter and human waste, and stray dogs would often roam the building. In these unsanitary conditions, one of the acolytes died of mysterious causes. 
Sound like that European shit. Not how a group of people came around and taught them cleanliness. All that shit just went out the window, huh? I guess you will still revert back to your nature, huh? I guess you will still revert back to eating your own in the dark ages, huh? I guess... That's insane, bro. But I don't understand it. Rightfully so, I stand under it. You looking for the aliens. The people with this shit is biological makeup is some of the aliens, bro. I swear to God, I'm not playing about that shit. I'm dead ass. You can don't look skin deep. Look at biology. When I get out the pool, I don't smell like wet ass sulfur. I don't stink. I don't. I smell like gold. Perfect. God's man. I ain't regular man. I ain't them. It's unfair, but it's the cards you dealt with. Just like you born with a biological makeup to win within the fans of this construct to a higher capacity. Like the Post Malone's or whatever got nine diamond records. It ain't that he better than everyone else. It's that he's really good. And that everybody is enjoying them and some people just by the sentence you born with they're not going to click on it not even going to hear you out and it's so you get what i'm getting at you born with attributes that's not fair that they don't have or whatever and they got things that work for them within the fans of this construct that you because you're it's the truth but let's continue newspapers got wind of this and began to speculate that it'd been a part some animalistic of behavior ritual. Not long after, Alistair gained infamy, and the myth of Mr. Crowley emerged. British periodical John Bull described him as, quote, the wickedest man in the world. Others accused him of worshipping Satan. Some believed that he actually was Satan. The Abbey of Thelema gradually fell apart, and all the members eventually left the commune. The abandoned building remains there today, although it's now vandalised and overgrown. For modern practitioners of Thelema, it remains a site of pilgrimage. Is that so like a memory of something that could have been. Disgraced and destitute, Crowley returned to England and retired from public life. In 1929, he soon be married to a woman named Maria Teresa Sanchez, although he continued to have the occasional affair every now and then. He spent the remainder of his Mother days Teresa. in the seaside town of Hastings. There, he wrote a few more books and offered students tuition for his magic. His final publication was the Book of Thoth, a tarot deck that remains popular today. In 1947, the Book of Thoth, the highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity and lanes which transcends our material words or symbols. It's my favorite verse, my favorite from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. I resonate with that like no other. I heard that and I'm like, bro, this shit, it's like it's tailor made to me in some weird way. It's one with me. It's not that I heard it and I like it and I'm still in Stilo. No. It goes beyond. That can only be understand by the individual. Similar like a psychedelic ayahuasca like DMT trip. You can't use verbiage to convey to someone the colors you seen and how it felt. Uh, it's not the matter if you don't have the words in your lexical or it's words and whatever language it is to express it. Some things is unutterable. They have to be experienced, which is that's God in itself. That's a percentage of God if you can't utter it. Telepathy, talking to someone telepathically. That's as as God, like it's, it's it's a piece of God. Um. Alistair Crowley developed chronic bronchitis and died peacefully in his sleep at the age of seventy-two. That's a good way to There's go out. There's much that can be said about the life of Alistair Crowley. But perhaps a 1915 Vanity Fair article put it best. Quote, a legend has been built around his name. He is a myth. No other man has so many strange tales told about him. Crowley himself once wrote that, quote, 1,000 years from now, the world will be sitting in the sunset of Crowleyanity. We've yet to see this outcome, so you have to wait until the year 2947. His legacy can be seen in strange and surprising places. Perhaps his largest influence has been in the revival of pagan practices. Religions like Wicca have increased in numbers from the 20th century well into the modern era, 
Many of Crowley's books and teachings have been widely published and remain as central reads for all those interested in magic and the dark arts. One of his strangest legacies has been in the world of music. Crowley has since become an icon of a number of countercultural movements, especially in punk and rock and roll. He can be found. And music is the universal language outside of, I mean, it's still all convert back into numbers because for music, if you're saying words, well, let's start back. Okay, music, frequency, sound, vibration. But beyond that, if you're saying things on this track, words and the smaller building blocks of words and letters and every letter is a number like a is one b is two c is three so on and so forth so music is a universal language binary code numbers but everything still revert back into numbers um so if you can do music and you can verbalize with the passion and the heart and even just offer different perspective, like how you just say things and how it hit the listener. You can do wonders. Like you've seen what Hitler did, his passion, his articulation, everything he had behind him that made him cohesively as a package. His people felt that. Tongue was stronger than a million guns because he can get millions of people to go and do whatever he say. That should tell you. Like, But if you, got, if you can do music and you got the verbiage, you can do that. You're unstoppable. It's the most. It's some of the most dangerous. <sighs> Who is all these people? These the, the Beatles? Am I tripping? All right. I'm just filling out the picture here. Looking for Elvis. Found here on the cover of the Beatles' 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts I like Marilyn. Band. Crowley's words have made their way Marilyn into Monroe. the lyrics of songs by David Bowie, Ozzy Osbourne, and Iron Maiden. Led Zeppelin Iron guitarist Maiden. Jimmy Page even bought Crowley's Scottish That's a torture manor, device as well. Lodge, but soon left the property after claiming that it was haunted. But for all his fame, are we guilty of glorifying the life of Alistair Crowley? By all accounts, he was not a likeable man. Many biographers recount his exceptional cruelty and ability to alienate those close to him. His conversations with spirits and demons could be a symptom of an underlying mental health condition exacerbated by his un- Crowley was a goddamn saint in compared to the elitists. More than 800,000 kids go missing annually. They being, you seen the movie Hostel, I advise you to go and see the movie Hostel 1, 2, and 3 by Quentin Tarantino. Rich people paying to torture people for however whatever they want to use chainsaws or whatever flay eat them as well adrenal that's a real thing that's going on to kids and yet your magical white sky god man and jesus ain't helping them um yeah they dump they doing mass genocide to sticky experiments dumping merium aluminum chemtrails particulates on us the land air and water even how, how they bro I can get into a billion goddamn things. It will elongate this video, but he's a saint in comparison to the elitists. They have grandmas and knowledge that he ain't even have that would have made him more powerful. He probably would have cultivated and became an ascended master. If he had what they have, they they the worst. He ain't nothing in comparison to them. The Queen E Lizard bitch, them he ain't nothing in comparison to them. As soon as I go online, I'm kicking they ass. I ain't consulting with no fucking body. Nobody. I'm going to do things how I see fit. Because when I wanted to change things, it's like I'm the only one talking. There ain't nobody doing it. Don't nobody want to do it. So, yeah, I go online and I got my prize. I'm whooping they ass. I ain't doing no talk. I'm tired of talking. Untreated addiction to alcohol and drugs. This is all for entertainment purposes only. I help make episodes for South Park. Today, we might throw all kinds of medical diagnoses at him. Sociopathy narcissistic personality disorder, disassociation, and drug-induced schizophrenia. Genius, insane. Visionary, fraud. Freethinker, cult leader. Perhaps he's all of these things, or none of them. However you choose to remember him, Alistair Crowley will be remembered, nonetheless. Right. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You want to get anywhere in life, you got to do what 99.9% .9 people are not willing to do. You got to take risks. The best things happen outside your comfort zone. You got to take risks, and you taking risks and not standing 
with the social norms of things you will be deemed where people just place titles on you they don't know you from a can of paint but they just see and perceive it however even they want to perceive it and they will just stamp you as such but i don't give a fuck about being light because irl your bitch ass can't beat me i'm better than you and everything if you hating on me that's how i feel and it's the truth my my dna going online i look better than you your parents was bumping uglies it's not the same no wonder you mad i wouldn't give a fuck if a motherfucker dislike me tell me that irl and i still won't give a fuck <laughs> i'm him i couldn't have been born with a better vessel i couldn't have i'm him they them they them that's it for this video don't forget to like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. Before we start rumbling, I kick your ass and you end up twitching. You seen how Inoue did that, boy? Uh, us versus them. We gonna win at the end. They have been winning for a very long time. It's us versus them. I'll see y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.